to the main event, days one, two, and three. Chip leader Mark Kroon. All the cards are out. Kroon holding, can I say it, squad douche against the 10 high straight of Somar Aldarwich. Kroon has the action. Aldarwich turned the nut straight, and Kroon was drawn to nothing. Kroon thinking about doing something. A bet of 51,800. Chip leader's got a bluff once in a while. Well, we haven't seen Kroon in the spot before, betting with nothing on the river. The German youngster in an enviable spot here. He's got the nuts, and he's been bet into. Naturally, Al Darwich will raise Kroon here. The question is how much? Wait. How much is that? Like I said, how much? It's a total of 167,500. Well, if it were two wooden nickels, it's more than Mark Kroon's going to put in. So Kroon with nothing. Is not going anywhere quickly, Norman. Unless he's Hollywooding it. Uh, he bluffed at it, got raised, but doesn't appear to be ready to say uncle. Well, I wonder if Kroon sees something in Al Darwich that makes him think that he's on a bluff. I raise. He says, I raise. I can't believe this is a Phil Helmuth approved play. A raise to almost 312,000 from Kroon. Kroon with a massive misread and a massive misstep. He's blowing up his day three chip lead. Now Darwich moves all in, and that doesn't leave much for Kroon to call. Just another 28,000. Kroon's getting about 27 to 1 on a call here. That's pretty <laughs> rare. He can only call here if he believes Al Darwich is just bluff shoved. Well, I don't have a hand, obviously. Uh, be a bluff. I'm never bluffing, I told you. I guess he's supposed to call just in case. He's got the chips. Uh, Look at the size of the pot. An embarrassed right, chip leader. Obviously. But obviously I can't fold. He does commit those chips. And Kroon mucks. Al Darwich now is the chip leader of the main event. Yeah, Mark Kroon blows up with King High, and we have a new king at this main event. Nearly 800,000 chips for Somar Al Darwich, and an ill timed attempt by Kroon to play bully cost him almost 60% of his stack. It was just incredible when he shoved all in on the river, and uh, it's still nuts, and he shows up. I don't know what he had, but. He said he could only, uh, he only can be the bluff, and it's just amazing now over 800k. And wow, I'm still alive, and it was so fun with him to play. And now I think we will never be friends again. Loose Lee looks down at pocket aces. 26 year old French pro with a raise to 325. Morgan Stern now on the button, the chip leader. 8 7 off. He's been experimenting with different diets, vegan for a while. Then he went to a plant-heavy diet with some juicing. And now it's a steady diet of super aggro play on the button. <laughs> Just started playing live poker a couple of years ago. A re-raise to 850 from Morgan Stern. Back to loosely now as the blinds fold. I warned Sylvan about Anton, but he has the proper tools to deal with the big stack bully in this hand. Waste. 1.8. And he says re-raise. He makes it a million aid. We talk often about shifting fortunes when big hand meets big hand. This is just big hand versus 8-7. Yeah, and of course, Anton could just take his 850,000 chip loss and move on with his other 23 million chips. Morgan Stern is not moving on a lot of those lavender chips, Norman. Wow. He re-pops it to 3.8 million. Lana takes a special maniacal chip leader to five bed with eight, seven off. I think we're safe here, Lana, but we might want to see cover. Good morning. <laughs> with the aces, Loosely says all in. And Morgan Stern has to give it up. Loosely with a huge pot. The bad timing award already been decided for this hour. This guy's got a different way of saying folding every hand. Who? Your boy. If Anton does that five more times, goodbye. Big Stack's got to play bully, but sometimes they get caught. Boom is not the word we would use to describe this hour of Anton Morgenstern's poker life. He's taken some serious blows to his chip stack here with ace-jack of clubs, a raise to 325. 
The name of Anton's poker movie is just Rays. <laughs> exactly. Mark Newhouse on the button with pocket deuces makes the call. J.C. Tran in the big blind folds, as does McKeel Brimmelhaus. With Morgan Stern spewing chips, no reason for Newhouse not to play a pot against him in position. These two clashing again. Here's the flop. Oh, my goodness. Deuces full for Newhouse while Morgan Stern flops trip aces. That's a flop like they used to make them a lot before everything got digitized. <laughs> no slow play from Morgan Stern with his trips, 425. Yeah, if you're Anton, nobody ever thinks you have a hand, so when he does have a hand, he's going to push with it. But Newhouse has the hammer with a full boat. Yeah, and if Newhouse knew Anton had an ace, he'd be twerking at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Newhouse has had Morgan Stern's number today. This could get very, very ugly. Just a call from Newhouse. Turn card, tray of hearts. No threat really to Morgan Stern's hand. From his mind, at least. He continues to lead out, and why not? 750. Newhouse loves it. And he's wondering how to proceed to get the most chips out of this pot. Mark Newhouse with the flop of his main event. And now he pounces, a raise to two million. Newhouse waits no longer, and boy, he's got Morgan Stern with the perfect hand to carry on and lose more chips. Anton wondering why would Newhouse raise here? Maybe a stronger ace, but that's unlikely. And it looks like he sees no good reason for that raise as he re-raises to 3.9 million. This pot is swelling, and we're not nearly done yet. Friends of Mark Newhouse wondering what their man has gotten himself into here. But Newhouse certainly knows. How much more can he get from Anton? Oh. He says all in. Well, now alarms have to go off in Anton's head. Newhouse willing to risk it all? What can Anton beat? And a call here would be for more than half of Anton's remaining stack. And a call wow. it is! And a stunning turn of events, one card from reality. No emotion from Anton, but he's got to be dazed and distressed. Morgan Stern can still bust Newhouse here with an ace, jack, or three. But Newhouse, one card from 22 million chips, and the main event lead, the river card, the four of clubs. Newhouse completes another double up through Morgan Stern. But Morgan Stern had 29 million chips earlier on day seven. He now has five million, and Newhouse now has the most chips in the room. What'd you say about this guy? <laughs> Lehavat under the gun, folds 10 for McLaughlin now with Pocket Kings. He'd love to draw as a youngster. At 16, he entered a major painting contest in Montreal and finished second, and I believe he took a bad beat in that one. Folded to Jay Farber with Pocket Aces. These are the second and third biggest stacks here, Aces versus Kings. We can have almost 80 million chips in the middle pre-flop, and Mark Etienne would be staring at a brutal end to his main event. Farber on the button, the second biggest stack at the table. And the expected re-raise to 3.8 million. Loosely folds his small blind. Reese the big, so back to McLaughlin with Kings. The final table shouldn't be decided like this. Kings shouldn't run into aces, Lon. If it were up to me, this would be an automatic misty. <laughs> Mark Etienne started the hand with nearly 50 big blinds. It's hard to believe all his chips are going to be in the middle and hopelessly behind in a few moments. This is Texas Hold'em ugliness at its worst. And there, the four bet to 8.7 million. You hear the crowd. With every raise, the tension gets thicker. And no insta-all in five bet from Farber. He looks like he wants to bleed McLaughlin a bit more to set the hook. Who will send the biggest message now? 19.4 million from Farber. All in. Call. Yep, and there you go. The train wreck that so often happens at a final table. McLaughlin feels the blunt of the blow, and it hurts. And now Mark Etienne McLaughlin, who had just rediscovered his footing in danger of a sudden exit. And Farber on the verge of a monster chip stack. One time. 
One time. One time. One time. One time. One time. Mark Hatchett using his one time. Under my rules, he wouldn't need it since the hands would be dead and we'd be moving on. The flop, 8-7, deuce, nothing there for Mark Etienne. Yeah, no king, no chance for runner-runner. McLaughlin in deep trouble. Jack of diamonds on the turn. The French Canadian saw red paint, but the thrill was short-lived. A king and a king only saves Mark Etienne McLaughlin. The river, another Jack ends it. Jay Farber with the huge knockout. Sending Mark Etienne McLaughlin into the night in sixth place. For McLaughlin, nothing to be ashamed of. No more entertaining walks and no French Canadian reprise to Jonathan Duhamel's 2010 title. And with the button, Farber made a min raise to two million. Reese picked up two jacks. Two big hands, heads up, pocket jacks, which even heads up is usually a loser. And Farber with an ace. A re-raise from Ryan Reese to five million. Farber's got to like his ace, like having position. But he has got his hands full with Ryan Reese, heads up. And a four bet for Farber here to 8.8 .8 million. And Ryan Reese is not going anywhere. Four bet normally a very strong play, heads up, but Farber has run into a bigger hand here, the pocket jacks. Ryan Reese content just to make the call here. Almost 18 million in the middle. Here is the flop. 4-8 Trey. Farber picks up middle pair. Reese loves the look of that flop. No ace, no king, no queen. All cards likely in Farber's range. Reese checks the pocket jacks. And if I'm Farber, I think I'm best right here, flopping middle pair. Farber with 6.7 million. With $2,000 to his name a year ago, Reese bought into the World Series circuit event in Hammond for $1,675. That's going all in, my friends. He finished second and won a quarter million dollars. And been on a tear since. And there is another call from Ryan Reese of 6.7 million. 31 million in the pot. Ryan Reese's parents, Frank and Cheryl, they see the deuce of hearts on the turn. Their son, Ryan Reese, still best. He checks again. I think Reese firmly believes his jacks are good, but he's content to let Farber bet into the pot. Farber added a wheel draw there. And it looks like he wants to keep firing. Why not? This time, Farber slides forward 13.6 million. I like the way Reese is playing this hand, getting a bunch of value for his pocket jacks. He's turning the Lon McCarran Memorial hand into a pot of gold. <laughs> and again, Reese just with the call. And 58 million in the pot. That's 30% of the chips on the table. A key hand and a huge pot. River card, seven of spades. Farber misses. And that's one of the safest boards ever. Heads up for pocket jacks. Reese checked the third time. Yes. Farber Let's checks, go. and Reese will take it. Yeah, Reese knew his hand was good, and he is embracing the moment. A huge pot for young Ryan Reese. A fist pump from a proud father. Ryan soaks in the love and stacks up the winnings. Reese!